Here's a preview of what you'll hear on the Just Get Hired podcast. Probably going to be the most, in most people's lifetime, the most disruptive technology that we've had since the internet. Um, but many people are equating it to, you know, when we had electricity. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Just Get Hired podcast. If you thought that Siri and Alexa are game changers right now in your household, well, you probably need to also try ChatGPT. Think of this as Google on steroids, literally anything you need to help you level up in whatever you're doing right now, especially if you're doing work, this will be a game changer. Well, welcome back to another insightful episode of the Just Get Hired podcast, where I explore this ever-evolving landscape of job searching, recruitment, and career development. Welcome to episode 51, and we have a special guest joining us today. His name is Ira Wolf, and he's emerged as one of the top five global thought leaders in the future of work and HR. Ira tells us that he is a millennial trapped in a baby boomer body, and he brings a fresh perspective to the ever-changing world of talent acquisition. He also hosts the Geeks Geezer Googleization podcast, and he engages in thought-provoking discussions on the intersection of technology and the workforce. He has a vast experience and expertise and has authored six books, including his latest works, Create Great Culture in a Remote World and Recruiting in the Age of Googleization. Well, in this episode, we're going to dive into the intriguing realm of AI in hiring and exploring how candidates and recruiters are utilizing ChatGPT and other AI technologies. With Ira's wealth of knowledge and insights, we're going to get a deeper understanding of the impact of AI on the future of work. From navigating remote work culture to optimizing the recruitment process, we're going to uncover practical strategies for success. So if you're a job seeker looking to leverage AI, or maybe you're a recruiter seeking to embrace digital transformation in everything that you do, well, this episode will be a goldmine of information, so get ready to be inspired and informed as we embark on a journey into the future of hiring with Ira Wolf. Let's go. Welcome, Ira, to the Just Get Hired podcast. I gave you an intro earlier, but I think my favorite part about your bio is that you refer to yourself as a millennial trapped in a baby boomer body. Hey, thanks, Jess. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, definitely have a baby boomer body, uh, but <laughs> you know, I, unless I look in the mirror or you know try to bend over and pick something up, uh, mo most of my <laughs> my day operates as uh, well. Actually, millennials are now in their forties, so. Oh, Maybe I need true. to change hmm. that to a Gen Z uh, in a baby boomer body. Well, I am excited to have you on as a guest. I think this topic is really relevant to what's happening right now. And I keep hearing the buzz because a lot of recruiters and a lot of companies are starting to use more AI and they're using it to streamline how they search for a job and how they are also hiring candidates. Would you say that you're hearing the same? Oh, absolutely. The, the, recruitment space or well, anything that has to do with people um whether you know whether it's recruitment or retention uh is certainly being disrupted uh we we've certainly put that on uh hyper speed over the last couple of years uh with the pandemic um and it, things just haven't slowed down so absolutely. yeah absolutely things are are changing quickly i think ai uh you know i know we'll talk a little bit more about that and chat gpt and some other things but uh they're you know, it's just the, the beginning. I mean, um, mm -hmm. I, I mention this often. I, we often say, well, this is a new chapter. Well, we're not even in the new chapter yet. We're still we're writing the prologue, <laughs> the foreword uh, of, of what's to come. Absolutely. Well, for those of people in the audience who might be under a rock right now and have not even heard the term chat GPT, <laughs> Can you break down what chat GPT is and maybe any other AI technology that you've been using today? Yeah, for sure. And and hopefully you're right. Um, I, I've been on the last uh, few weeks, uh, you know, in the, during the spring uh, at lots of conferences. And on each conference, I ask, you know, how many people have used chat GPT? Uh, and it's one of the, it, put this in, in a frame of reference. It's the fastest 
adoption rate of any technology in history. Wow. Uh, so to, you know, we'll, we'll explain what it is in just a second, but just to give a reference why this is important, it took 10 months for Facebook, for those who remember when Facebook came on the scene, you know, almost uh, <laughs> 16, 17 years ago, uh, it took 10 months to get 100 million users worldwide. It only took five days to get 100 million users on chat GPT. This episode is brought to you by Easy Source. Are you tired of spending countless hours searching for the perfect candidate for your job opening? Look no further because Easy Source is the ultimate talent sourcing product that revolutionizes your recruitment process. The future of talent sourcing is just a click away. With Easy Source, finding candidates has never been easier. By using an easy to install Chrome extension combined with an intuitive dashboard, Easy Source allows you to effortlessly source relevant candidates just by logging into your LinkedIn profile. With Easy Source, you'll be in control of your recruitment success. So recruiters, Say goodbye to tedious candidate searches and say hello to streamlined talent sourcing with Easy Source. Visit the website or look in the show notes for your referral link and sign up today. Oh my gosh. So, wow. uh, you know, and, and so people are still saying, well, you know, should I be on Facebook or, you know, are you on Facebook? And, you know, the whole generation has moved past Facebook. Uh -huh. And here we have ChatGPT. So the adoption rate's incredible. So thinking about that, uh, I ask all my audience, you know, all the audiences that I have. And usually, if I'm lucky, there's 20%, maybe 10% of the hands go up that have used it. Mm -hmm. And then I ask how many people who have not heard about it yet. And that's the scary part, because mm -hmm. a lot of hands go up, far more than 50%. And for a force, for a technology that is this disruptive with a rate of adoption that people don't even know what it is, uh, is scary. So what is mm -hmm. ChatGPT? Well, uh, probably going to throw out a little bit of lingo here, uh, but GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained um, uh, uh, Transfer. Mm -hmm. So it's gener generative, to say that fast three times, <laughs> Generative Pre-Trained uh, transfer. Uh, and what it does is it just looks over a vast amount of data, almost all, like everything that's published on the internet. So mm -hmm. imagine that over, over the years. So it looks at all the data and then uh, through deep, deep learning, uh, it it basically, you can ask it any question. Think about asking Google a question, you know, or putting mm -hmm. it a Google question. Uh, and it's it is it is just incredibly advanced. So you could people who are using it to you know in going back to our what we're talking about today, you know, write mm -hmm. write a job description. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also writing interview questions. It's you can create presentation. You can ask it to write a movie script <laughs> if you want it. Wow. Uh, you can actually ask it. You can train. You, you can use it to have a, a dialogue. Uh, with somebody asking you questions and then uh, getting different iterations over it. Uh, I, I use it all day long, not necessarily to create things, but I'll have an idea. I'll put the mm -hmm. idea in there, ask it to rewrite it in a way that someone 10 years old could understand it or that a professional could understand it or that it's in a more engaging tone uh, or uh, maybe in a compelling style, a persuasive style, and experimenting with it and coming up with different iterations uh, to, to, be, to, to do. I do a lot of writing, uh, yeah. a lot of scripting. I have my, you know, I have my own podcast and say, what's a better way to say that? Um, right. So it's become my, in a sense, my virtual assistant. Um, and, and that's where I think HR and many professions are, are doing that every day. It seems that there's another organization that says, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not, we're, we're changing the way we hire, or maybe we're going to cut back on some people because now we found that, um, AI, what, whatever you want to call it, but mm -hmm. specifically chat GPT, uh, is, you know, is changing how we work how we get things done. So chat GPT is in, in, in a sense, other than all the technical terms that we can use to describe it, uh, is essentially a virtual assistant. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's the people that are learning 
how to use it to not automate, not to replace people, but to, to be better at what they do, to get answers quicker, but also to, uh, to become better at what they do uh, is, is just revolutionary. And, uh, you know, this is probably going to be the most, dis- in most people's lifetime, the most disruptive technology that we've had since the internet. Um, but many people are equating it to, you know, when we had electricity yeah, and automobiles and, and uh, you know, a combustion engine. Mm-hmm. Well, you kind of alluded earlier about how people are using it to write job descriptions and uh, job seekers are using it to create resumes and help with their interviews. But how do you feel like the use of chat GPT or any other AI um, could be used specifically for job search? So it's, so there's, I'll, I'll say how you can use it, but there's a significant limitation of, okay. of, of how not to use it. So in how can you use it for job search? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you, are you talking from the recruiter standpoint or from a job seeker standpoint? Um, well, I would be interested in both, but let's start with the job seeker in mind. Okay. How can someone use it um, to help them if they're looking to land their dream job? Well, so you could, so the most important part of ChatGPT is it has a lot of information that's out there. So Uh, It it can consolidate and aggregate it and give you an answer. But what's important is, is how you frame the question. You know, what question are you answering? Because the one Mm -hmm. thing that ChatGPT does or any AI, it'll give you an answer. It may make up the answer, but it'll give you an answer. (laughs) So the question is, is that if you ask it a question of, here's my resume, here's the experience I have, here's the education I have, here's what I enjoy doing. Uh, could you create a resume for me? Or can you create a cover letter for me? Or can you help me uh, kind of in, 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 uh, in, six, in, a, in less than 100 words, mm-hmm. could you write a description that would get the attention of a recruiter? Mm. So essentially is, is how do you beat the algorithms? Right. <laughs> um, now, you're not going to beat an algorithm, but how <laughs> could I grab the attention of a recruiter that sees my resume or sees my cover letter, or if I'm reaching out to them on LinkedIn, can you Mm -hmm. write a LinkedIn message for me that I'm sending to a recruiter at XYZ manufacturing company for the position of compensation uh, benefits manager uh, and, you know, and, and go on and, you know, in Mm -hmm. an, an engaging persuasive, uh, friendly style. So it a lot of what you do with ChatGPT, it has to do with the way you frame the question, but that's what I would do. I mean, how, how here's, here's what I was going to write and mm-hmm. people do it all the time. Here's the message I was going to send. Here's the email I was going to send. Here's my cover letter. Here's my resume. How, what recommendations would you have, or how could you improve this for me? And you ask it a couple of different times and it will Mm -hmm. generate different versions of that. Now you have to make sure you check it because as I said, it does sometimes make things up or maybe (laughs) it would exaggerate what you do because it's based on the information that it has available. And Mm -hmm. as we all know, 70% of resumes in the past, this isn't new, this isn't because of AI, but in the past, 70% of resumes had lies on them or or at least hyperbole exaggerations. Uh, so if it's going to uh, digest all the resumes that are out there and say, well, this sound, this is a really, really good one. And it sounds similar to what you're looking for. Uh, it may include some hyperbole, um, but it, it will rephrase it in different ways. And if you don't like it, you say, rewrite it again in a more persuasive way or a more uh, friendly way or a more authoritarian way, if you wanted to go that route. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, so that's how job seekers, I, I, I think, is how can they present themselves better with the facts about them? Don't make up facts right. but with, with what your history is. I have 10 years of education. I have a master's degree. I have I have a high school degree, but I have 32 years of experience. What is it that you could um, that the information, the basic information that you can put into it and ask it to uh, create a again, anything from a cover letter to uh, even an answer to a 
a, a question. It's, you know, many resumes or many applications have questions on them mm-hmm. and go, um, could you write, you know, either write the answer, the, the, your response mm-hmm. and, and ask it to edit it or just ask it for ideas. What's, what would be a, what would be a way I can answer this question? Uh, and that would get the attention of the recruiter. Um, again, it's, it's a bit of a game, um, you know, and give and take. And some people say, well, that's not very honest that you had chat GPT write it for you. Um, but then again, um, people, people hired resume writers, haven't yeah. they? Exactly. <laughs> Career yeah. characters. And so, hey, I think this is a this would be a better way to to write your to uh, pitch your resume. Um, so we're just getting again a virtual assistant that's helping us do it. Well, I have actually uh, toyed around with it a little bit, and one of the things that I've also have told people that are testing it out, um, especially for writing a resume, is to take bullet points from the actual job description from the job that you're trying to apply for and see how you can incorporate that into like your past work experience and ask chat GPT to kind of craft up, you know, a little section or a few bullet points um, that would speak to some of those highlights on a job description and how to highlight that on your actual resume. So um, haven't heard back from anyone if, you know, those tips have helped, but I think You know, we're seeing a lot more of that, but you're right. If you hire a resume writer, you know, you weren't writing your resume to begin with. <laughs> so we're just now having technology uh, take care of that for you. Yeah. And the competition is going to get greater because there are people that maybe weren't very good at promoting themselves or pitching themselves or or, or just had the basics, um, you know, basic skills. I mean, they might have the uh, you know, maybe they're a recent grad or they didn't have much experience in their field and they're going to put it through uh, chat GPT and it's going to rewrite it in in a more professional, let's say, creative way uh-huh. uh, that grabs the attention. Uh, and that's what the goal is. I mean, hopefully nobody's hiring just on a resume anymore, right. um, but they grab the attention of the recruiter that allows you to have a, a conversation with them. And then then you're on your own. I mean, you, you still have to show up and, <laughs> you know, we're, we're not quite... A, on that stage yet where everything's going to be done automatically through chat, you know, chat GPT will be talking to chat GPT one uh, okay. and, and be able to hire you from that um, and, and have an algorithm do it. Uh, we're, we're hopefully still going to have some human interaction, you know, within there. Uh, but people are going to have to become better to uh, at, at uh, you know, at standing out and differentiating yourself for sure. Now I, I, I said, there's another side to the coin. Mm-hmm. Uh, to the equation. Uh, the chat GPT-4 uh, is based on the the information that it had available, which was up through 2020, early 2022. Okay. So if you ask it a current question, if you, let's say a job seeker said, uh, can you give me the salary range, a reasonable salary range to ask for for a particular position it's going to be based on 2021 maybe early 2022 data oh wow Uh, okay so if you said what's the way so here's where uh, where things like alexa and siri and google still have more relevance than chat gpt and are smarter Mm -hmm. is that the information that that chat gpt is relying on uh is a database that that uh, is current up through again earliest is early 2022. If you say what's the weather tomorrow, mm-hmm. or what's you know what's the weather tonight, uh, or what's the most current, what's the number one movie uh, movie in the theaters, um, it's it's not going to give you an accurate answer. It's, okay. and, and many times it'll just say we can't do that if you ask it for for anything about emotions as mm-hmm. well. Uh, if you asked it to write it in a um, empathetic way, mm-hmm. uh, chat GPT may come out and say, we can't do that because we don't have emotion. Right. AI does not have emotion. Now it can mimic emotion. It can write it in an empathetic way using the words, but it wouldn't display empathy. So it depends on how you ask the question. 
mm -hmm. uh, how you're going to get a response back. But um, so you have to be careful with it, that some of the information that will come back, what, what they have found is if you af ask it a question that it doesn't have an answer for, which would be something that happened yesterday or tomorrow or it's going to happen tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, it may make up the answer. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be careful on, on, on the data. Yeah. It, I mean, it's part of the scary thing, too, because it's not only it is not just creating deep fakes, but it's it's creating um, it, it literally makes up the answer. Wow. Well, you talked about uh, how it can help job seekers. So my other question, I guess, was also about maybe how it can help employers to improve yeah. their hiring process. So, you know, what other ideas do you have on how AI can help? Well, we mentioned job descriptions before. So again, and I've been an advocate of this way well before AI, mm -hmm. is that job descriptions are a legal document. I mean, it's here's the responsibilities. You know, here's a here's a, a description that went through legal um, of what the job is required. Um, you know, what the essential responsibilities are, what the physical uh, requirements are. A when when you're looking when when you're when you're advertising, and that's what it is, when you're advertising mm -hmm. on Indeed or promoting, you know, say we have an open position, how do we attract people? That's really marketing. I mean, right. it shouldn't, you shouldn't be copying based on your job description. So I've been, uh, I wrote my book in 2017. <laughs> and, uh, you know, even before that, I was saying that, but it was published. So for the last six years, I've been saying that, but people still want to copy and paste their job description. So how can you take your, like, just like you said, with a uh, you know, with it for a job candidate, mm -hmm. how can you take your job description and write it in a persuasive, compelling, um, engaging style that would attract the best candidates? Mm -hmm. Or you could get more specific. How can we attract more diverse candidates? And you have to watch it because you don't want to say, hey, we have a, uh, we want to attract more uh, women in the workplace. Well, you can ask it that and, and, but, you know, you could ask it maybe in a more appropriate way would be how can we not only get a more diverse um, uh, uh, can group of candidates to apply, but how could we ask it in a more feminine style rather than a masculine style? Because a lot of the words you use uh, that people use, and there's software already out there that does this, that analyzes it, um, that from an unconscious bias were right. male masculine dominated words so when you talk about um, you know even war for talent but you talk about competition versus collaboration um, is that it that uh, that highly competitive words uh, more assertive and aggressive words uh, tend to attract more males to mm -hmm apply subconsciously and, and uh, unco not unconsciously, but subconsciously. Um, so it, it could help you maybe change the tone a little bit to be more open uh, to different uh, uh, protected groups, minority groups. Awesome. Uh, that would be a really good use for it because companies are, are terrible and we can't get out of our own way. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we <laughs> have to admit the first thing you admit is we got our biases and mm -hmm. what's a better way to to um, to write that so my own personal biases don't um, handicap us? Agreed there. And, you know, one of the things I do help companies do is rewrite their job descriptions to make it more compelling because I work with so many companies that feel like, well, we've got all the responsibilities listed here. Just copy and paste that into Indeed or on LinkedIn and let's just see what we can find. I'm like, oh, God, no. Like <laughs> Yeah. No wonder yeah. you can't find talent, you know? It's so. incredibly <laughs> subtle. Uh, I, I'm, you know, and I, I certainly became much more aware of this over the last few years, but that, and again, some of these were when a lot of the tech companies, you know, started to embed, um, how do we remove the bias? Mm -hmm. And we thought that it was personal bias, but a lot of it was just the words that we're using and the research showed that, you know, it turned off certain segments of the population or attracted to other segments of the population. So uh, again, is when we talk about being more diverse and, and inclusive and equitable, uh, is sometimes the, our intentions were right, but our ability to get out of our own way right. uh, was, was great. So um, now, admittedly, 
AI is just looking at all the data that's out there. So you have to be careful. I'm not saying that mm-hmm. AI can answer. You can ask it to do it in a more open, diverse, inclusive style or manner. Um, but because it's analyzing a lot of the data that's out there and a lot of the data that's out there is already biased, uh, mm-hmm. it may be better, but it still could use some improvement. Yeah, good point. Well, are there any industries or types of jobs that you feel that even chat GPT or other AI can help um, certain candidates? Is it more tech focused or do you think it'll, it could help like pretty much anybody? Well, I think it could help anybody. I mean, there's certainly, there's certainly some industries and, and some, um, you know, oh, I'd say industries that may be less impacted now. Uh, I mean, we're, we, we need plumbers, we need electricians, uh, we need tradespeople, we need HVAC techs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, th- those are, I'm, I'm not, I, I think those are still going to be old, you know, rel- I think old school methods uh, will still work for those. Right. Um, but when we talk about beyond tech, you know, some of the industries that are going to be most impacted, one of them is HR, by the way, mm-hmm. there's more and more people coming out with HR, but HR, uh, marketing, sales, uh, professionals, uh, and when I say professionals, it could be finance, mm. um, um, banking, um, administ- the administrative uh, aspects of healthcare, not necessarily physicians and nurses, but, and, and uh, you know, physical therapists, but um, any of the administrative roles. So insurance, banking, finance, um, administ- uh, again, professionally administrative roles. Mm-hmm. Uh, those, you know, uh, I mean, almost all of us live in a tech world these days, but uh, they're going to be significantly impacted. But one of the most impact, the two most impacted sectors that I've seen or careers that I've seen um, thus far that uh, are pretty unanimous that's going to be impacted is uh, mm-hmm. marketing and HR. Wow. That's very eye opening, uh, but not surprising at the same time, um, because definitely I'm using it. Not only for marketing, like even my podcast, I I put a couple things in there, but I also use it, like I mentioned, for job descriptions. I've been using it a lot to write copy for different things. So um, it's not not unusual to hear that. And I, I've been trying to introduce it to a lot of people within my own organization, but not everyone's too quick to try it. Yeah. I mean, when large organizations like IBM says, hey, we're going to freeze hiring on X number of jobs, I think I I can't remember what it was, 5,600 jobs um, to wait and see uh, what AI can do. A lot of those roles were administrative. uh, HR was part of it. And uh, but marketing significantly, Um, almost every company that I've talked to small and large startups and enterprise companies, the uh, marketing almost universally is, is probably the single, the the single most impacted job that I've seen Um, because a lot of it was took a lot of time for research and copywriting and not that it's going to replace humans, but it's, it's going to replace some humans, but the humans that, that had average skills, you know, Tom Friedman, or for those who you don't recognize the name, but, you know, he wrote um, the, the World is Flat, you know, 20 years ago and then several other books. Um, but he had uh, one of his more recent books. He talked about that average is over. And so people who had average skills, um, they're the ones that will be most in trouble. People who have more advanced skills may get away with it for a while, but people who learn how to collaborate and use, as I said this from the very beginning, that learn to use AI of any form, but currently ChatGPT, because that's the consumer version of it, uh, that learn to collaborate with it, to use it, to, to become better, uh, will be the people that will continue to have jobs and really thrive over mm-hmm. the next few years. Uh, people who avoid it and are feel f- fearful of it and uh, you know have qualms of well that's cheating um, they're going to really struggle and I, and sadly i think they're going to be out of work 
Well, you know, I just opened up my computer and there's an article that just hit my desk. It says IBM to fill 7,800 roles with AI instead of people. Yeah. So I, I might, yeah, that's, I, that's one of them I was referring to. And I might, I might've been off. I thought it said 5,400, but maybe okay. they just rate, maybe, maybe you have a more current version and they raise the total. So. <laughs> well, gosh, um, well, this is, I, I feel like we could go into like hours and just talking about how technology is constantly evolving. I know you've written a couple of books, um, especially around this. Um, so you're a six time book author, What's your recent book and do you have anything coming up next? Yeah, I do. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, I mean, the one, my most popular book, uh, well, at least my most popular current book was Recruiting in the Age of Googleization. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was out, uh, the second version was out in 2020. But last year, I collaborated with four, other, three other uh, authors and we, we wrote a short book called Create Great Culture in a Remote World. Uh, and really, my focus was not the technology, but it was about the how, how do humans thrive? How can managers help um, engage workers uh, who are working hybrid or, or remote? You know, part of the problem is is working remote. Um, people blame that that well, we just can't create relationships through a screen, and that's not true because companies do it. So, what's it take? You know, how do, how do you manage, supervise, engage, collaborate through screens as well as you did in person? Um, so that's why I focused on growth mindset and adaptability. And then my newest book will be out in the summer of 2023. And again, I'm a co-author of that. Uh, and it's about uh, the book is called The Change and it's about self-empowerment. So for all the listeners that are out there and go, what happens to me as a human being <laughs> moving mm -hmm. forward? Uh, that's who it's written for. It uh, it talks about purpose. How do you find your why? And it talks about growth mindset and adaptability skills uh, and how can you grow and thrive in the future? And there's a huge opportunity out there, but people are going to have to become better at being human beings than they were before. I love that. Well, to end this, I guess, what would be one thing that AI or a computer wouldn't tell me about you? <laughs> Oh, that's a great question. When, uh, <laughs> what wouldn't it tell about me? Uh, well, it probably wouldn't tell me about uh, being the millennial in a, in a, a baby boomer <laughs> body or, or the Gen X, uh, but you already knew that about me. Um, I I guess that, it. I don't know if it would tell me that I was, you know, uh, again, I... I'm a recovering fixed mindset person, which means that I'm a growth mindset, you know, for, for a long time, it was like, oh, you don't want to do that. It won't make you look smart or, or people have different expectations and, and you want to try something, but you're fearful of it. And now, you know, uh, I just signed up for, I'm, I'm in my, I mean, I'm an older baby boomer. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. in my seventies. I just signed up for a certificate program at Wharton. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Um, so that's probably something that's current and that people wouldn't know. And it's about neuroscience. It's about how, how do we use our brains to, to get better business results? Uh, so it, I, I don't think uh, chat GPT would be able to tell you <laughs> that about me. <laughs> yet. They won't tell you yet. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, full disclosure, I actually use chat GPT to generate most of these questions for our episode. So I think I covered all of the highlights or at least the computer did. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, great questions. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and um, I, I couldn't have told you that, but, uh, but uh, again, the questions were great. And um we had a, had a fun conversation and appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, Ira. Well, now we're come to the end of an insightful episode, and I want to recap the key takeaways about this technology in the context of job searching and finding candidates. But before I do that, thank you again, Ira, for sharing your experience with us and shedding light on AI and ChatGPT. Make sure that you guys show Ira some love, head over to his podcast, give it a listen, Geeks, Geezer, Googleization, explore many of his different books if you want guidance on how to navigate the future of work. I'll put all of his links in the show notes so you know where to find him. And of course, on my website, justgethired.com. Speaking of, if you like my content, make sure you're following me on social media, head over to my Instagram page, 
just get hired. But the best way is to connect with me, follow me and network with me on LinkedIn by searching my full name, Jessica Fiesta George. Yes, Fiesta is my middle name. And sign up for my newsletter on my website, justgethired.com. Well, these technologies offer a wealth of benefits to career professionals. So here are three reasons why I think that you might find them useful. The first thing is enhanced efficiency. ChatGPT and AI tools can streamline your job search and they can help you with your recruitment process. This will save you time and a lot of effort if you're a candidate or if you're a recruiter. Think about the ability that you have to quickly analyze resumes. Maybe you wanna conduct automated screenings. Maybe you need to generalize some responses and make them more personalized. Well, AI can help you navigate through a large pool of applicants or job listings more efficiently. The next thing is improved candidate response. AI powered chatbots are popping up on a lot of different career websites right now, and especially virtual assistants. They can also provide personalized and prompt responses to candidate inquiries. It can also enhance experience through the application process. It can answer real-time feedback, answer those frequently asked questions. But think about how quickly you can respond to candidates, and that will help create a positive impression on promoting a strong employer brand. The next thing is data-driven decision-making. AI algorithms analyze a lot of data. Ira mentioned it earlier. They can identify patterns and trends. So this can help you if you're a career professional in making data-driven decisions. You can identify the most relevant job opportunities based on your skills and preferences. Or if you're a recruiter, you can also put in a lot of different keywords or ask it different things to help you identify the best talent. Leveraging ChatGPT and other AI technologies you can tap into a lot of advantages and adapt to this ever-changing landscape of recruitment. Well, it's important though that we strike a balance between technology and human interaction. So make sure that you also still have that human touch and that's always present throughout the hiring journey. Well, guys, I want to thank you for joining me on this thought-provoking episode. Remember, technology continues to shape the job market Stay informed and embrace the new tools because this can help you unlock success in your career. Well, I'm also excited to introduce you guys to the spicy gnome hot sauce because I am going to take you guys on a fiery adventure. Next month, the spicy gnome is sponsoring a summer series of the Just Get Hired podcast, and we're going to give you the hottest takes about the hottest topics this summer. So stay tuned next month for more episodes because I'm going to introduce even more of your favorite LinkedIn and business influencers from around the globe. So get ready to spice up your life and your career. Visit thespicygnome.com and experience the flavors the Spicy Gnome hot sauce has today. Well, my name is Jessica Fiesta George, your host of the Just Get Hired podcast. What do y'all want to talk about next? I'll catch you on my next episode.